All right, this video is picking up right where the previous video left off. We're still in the same document. Link to that document's in the video description. All the code that I'm gonna show you in this video is gonna work perfectly in Octave, exactly as shown here in MATLAB. And we're moving from the previous video, cell arrays, to this video, the topic is structures. Now, if you've ever programmed in C or C++, yes, this is structs. This is the same thing. I like to think of structs as just a bundle of variables. Cell arrays and structures are both a way to store in a single variable information of different types. So I'm going to do a very similar thing to what I did in the cell array video, the previous video, but I'm going to do it with structures. I'm going to create three variables. The first one is just a vector, one, two, three. The second is a vector of characters, A through G. And the third is a two by three matrix of single precision values. So I'm going to run this code. And then I'm gonna use this right here to put those three different pieces of information into this variable that I've named my struct. I could have named it ABC. Well, no, I mean, I guess those are already in use. I could have named it Tom, uh, Harry, Mo. I could have named it XYZ. It's just a variable name. But the key thing here is then I can say dot and then another variable name of my choosing equals this right here. And so basically, my struct is a bundle of variables, and one of the internal variables, one of the variables in the bundle, is named some numbers. And another variable in the bundle is named some letters. And a third one is named other numbers. And I can continue to access and interact with those just by using the outer variable name dot the inner variable name. And so when I display out my structure, this is what it looks like. And if I want to specifically access the other numbers, well, I say display my other numbers, and this is the result right here. I can index directly into my other numbers as if it was just a regular variable. I can say give me row two, column two, and there's the five right there. So if you think of cell arrays as organizing different types of data numerically, like a matrix with a row number and a column number, you can think of a structure as organizing other variables using names. So it's like, do you want to organize by number or by name? If you want to organize by number, use a cell array. If you want to organize by name, use a structure. We can easily create vectors of structures. So that's what I do in this section. It's a little bit clunky, the code, um, but that's mostly because of how I wrote it. I just said my struct at position two, the second index into this structure vector that I'm creating on the fly, put some numbers equal to this right here. So a different some numbers. Now, when I just print out my struct.sum numbers, it actually displays out two different results the sum numbers from the first position in the vector and the sum numbers from the second position in the vector. So, this is a vector where each value is a bundle of variables, and those variables are some numbers, some letters, and other numbers. And the values in there might be nothing if I haven't filled them in yet or they might be the values in some numbers that we're seeing right here in the output. We can also index into them directly. We can just say my struct at position one, that sum numbers, which is different from my struct at position two, that sum numbers. So this is getting uh, maybe a little bit more complex than I needed to right away with structures. So let's continue on down here. We've actually seen structures before in the curve fitting section, for example. And so here's some code from the curve fitting section exactly as it was. I'm pretty sure I copied it exactly. So let's run it here. All right, and we get this graph. We've fitted a curve to data, whatever. That's all fine and good. But I want to bring your attention to this line of code right here, 1057, where I have two different variables set equal to polyfit parentheses x comma y comma two. So I'm getting a second degree fit to my data and I'm getting two results. Coef is going to be a vector of coefficients of a polynomial, the fitted polynomial, second degree. Stats is going to be a structure. If I just display out stats, this is what I see right here. Stats is a structure that contains three internal variables. I had three variables in my previous example and three in this one, but it can contain, you know, one, two, five, ten, however many variables you need can be bundled inside this structure. So the three variables are capital R, DF, and norm R. And if I want to just access R and see it in more detail, I can display stats.r. And there's the matrix, the three by three matrix of R values. 
Here, I create a structure using the assignment statement. My structure is going to be named student, so I say student.first equals John, student.last equals Doe, student.maybe test scores equals this vector right here. So it's just another simple example of structures, and there is my structure right there. The value of structures is that we bundle all this data together. We're not going to like suddenly have disorganization. We're not going to have our last name separated from our first name if we sort the wrong column of some table or something like that. That's not going to happen. The structure keeps it all bundled together. Here's another vector of structures, and I'm also demonstrating the struct function to pre-allocate our structure. So in the same way that there's a cell function to pre-allocate a cell array, there is a struct function to pre-allocate a structure. And the way it works is you say, what is the variable name, comma, what is the default value? I'm just using dot, dot, dot to go down to the next line here. And then what is the next variable name? What is its default value? Now, the first two variables are text. So I just use an empty character vector as the default. But for the test scores, it should be a numeric vector. So the default is an empty vector, just like this. And by saying student parentheses three, I'm creating a vector of three structures. So let me run this code. So this is what displays out when I display the empty student. It's a one by three struct array with uh, these fields. Field is the technical term for the variables that are contained within a structure. And then I'm gonna put in values for the first two students. So student at position one in the vector, first name, last name, and test scores, there they are. Student at position two will have this first name, last name, and these test scores. And I'm gonna leave student three empty. Great, so I can display out just the entirety of student, and it will display out this right here. It doesn't actually look any different than when it was empty, so that's a little bit confusing. If we want to see the details, we should index in. All right, who is student two? Student two is Jane. So this line, 1090, displayed this output right here. What about student three? Well, student three is the one that I left empty. So that's this information right here. It's just the default values. And I can just access student two in particular, just their test scores, just their third test. And there's the 96 that Jane Smith scored from right there. Lastly is just a classic address example. I think an address is a really good example of an appropriate use of a structure because for an address, you want to organize the data by name. You don't just want to have address data, item number one, two, three, four, and five, and then have to figure out, okay, well, what is item number four? Oh, it's the state. Wasn't that obvious? It's better to organize by name. Okay, well, here's one address. What is the number? Oh, great. Well, the number is this. What is the street? Oh, well, the street is this. What's the city? What's the state? What's the zip? And this is just a made up address. Obviously, parts of it are real, but other parts are not. And I don't know, just to demonstrate, I did create it as a vector of structures. So this is an address vector that's going to have five empty positions. And each of those positions is going to be an empty structure with these default values. So the default number is going to be zero. The default street is going to be an empty character vector. Same for default city and state. And the default zip code is also going to be just the number zero. And then I fill in just one particular address and then I display out just that particular address. The rest of them will be empty. And so there's our output right there. And so to summarize what I said earlier, cell arrays organize information into numeric indexes, structures organize information using words or names. And they are both useful for organizing information of different types. If you're just all using numeric data or all just text data, you might as well just use a standard vector or matrix. But if you need to mix data types, you probably need to use one of these two things. Now that's the end of this video. The next video is going to be just a little bit miscellaneous. It's going to cover uh, the array editor, uh, which is a very small little topic. And then also I'm going to demonstrate some code that will translate data from binary to decimal, a binary to decimal conversion. Now this already exists built into MATLAB, but I think it's just useful for students to see how it might be done typed out manually. So I'm going to demonstrate that. It's also just another review of functions, which I just find people really need a review of. So that'll be in the next video.